In biology, there is a concept known as living fossils. An idea behind a modern species that surprisingly resembles ancient species we usually find in various fossils. One example here would be horseshoe crabs that seem to resemble these fossils discovered in sediments even going back 450 million years. Or even an example that you might see outside in the streets. A tree known as Ginkgo biloba, with very similar fossilized leaves discovered in fossils 170 million years old. And actually quite a few very similar examples exist out there, usually involving the body itself resembling ancient species quite a lot, with only some minor changes here and there, but overall very similar appearance. And because of these discoveries, in the last few decades, evolutionary biologists have always tried to figure out, so okay, exactly what is going on here. And these actually species whose DNA did not change much and that basically remained the same for one reason or another, or essentially did not undergo any molecular change, or are these just superficial similarities just based on morphology and nothing else? Whereas the molecular biology and the DNA, of course, would be entirely different. In other words, these are not really the same species, they just kind of look the same. And well, in the last few decades, based on different studies and different molecular analysis, the overall consensus in biology is that a better term for this would be not living fossil but instead stabilomorph, suggesting that they do have different molecular structure and different DNA and, for example, crocodiles from today are definitely not the same species as crocodiles during the times of dinosaurs. And instead they seem to follow some kind of a adaptive strategy that very often results in extremely similar morphological features. We've actually briefly discussed something very similar happening with crabs in one of the videos in the description. And so instead this superficial resemblance seemed to be entirely external and not internal. These were not the same species. And this was really important to establish because a lot of previous assumptions involving these living fossils even hinted on the idea of the absence of evolution in some of these unusual species. Whereas in reality this is what's known as stabilizing selection, which usually ends up producing extremely similar morphological features because they seem to be very successful. So for example, crocodiles look the same because it seems to work even millions of years later. But that's I guess until now. We have a new study that might have discovered the first ever actual living fossil and a species whose DNA has not changed for millions of years. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss biology and evolution once again and let's discuss this unusual discovery of potentially the oldest organism on the planet in terms of molecular biology. But once again, a really important side note, we are only talking about molecular biology or essentially what's inside the organism and the organism's DNA, not the visual appearance, because in this case we do have a lot of different examples. And based on a lot of previous studies, and here we're just talking about genetic or molecular studies, we we'll know that on average, a species turnover time is anywhere from 500,000 to maybe 3 million years. Or basically after about 3 million years, you're not going to actually have the same species because after 3 million years, we normally end up with descendants that are no longer genetically compatible to the original species. And because of this, a lot of biologists did not like the idea of these living fossils because it sort of made people think that some species stop evolving. And in most cases, this is entirely not true. Now, when it comes to species, a very famous example is horses and donkeys. Horses and donkeys have approximately 4 million years of evolution between them. And you can technically mate a horse and a donkey to produce a mule. But the thing about mules is that they're all infertile. They're not able to create new babies due to dramatic differences between horses and donkeys, which then end up producing genes that are no longer fertile. But animals that diverged less than 4 million years ago can easily produce fertile offspring and can thus be seen as the same species. For example, a wolf-dog hybrid, because both wolves and dogs have relatively similar genes. And intriguingly, a lot of molecular biology studies discovered that something similar applies to a lot of these ancient living fossils as well. So for example, a modern horseshoe crab apparently only appeared approximately 25 million years ago. But it just so happens that they looked extremely similar to a lot of these ancient fossils, which molecularly would be entirely different. They would not be able to crossbreed and they would not be able to produce any offspring. And something extremely similar has been discovered about most of them, including the most famous example, the very strange deep sea fish called Colacanth. These fish were thought to be extinct and we've only known about them from various fossils, but that's until accidental bycatch and a few additional photos in the last few years discovered that they actually seem to still exist 
at least in terms of appearance, but in terms of genetics and molecular biology, they are not the same species once again. Interestingly, a very similar fish, in terms of appearance, existed all the way back 400 million years ago. And so for the most part, this has been the general consensus in the last few years, or I guess more like in the last few decades. But that's until this very recent study that you can learn more about from the easy to digest tweet by Chase Brownstein, one of the researchers behind this paper. Wait, did I say tweet? I mean, eggs. Ah, uh, wait, what do you even call these? Anyway, and so in essence, this is the first official discovery of a living fossil in terms of molecular biology. A type of a fish known as gar, that kind of resembles a crocodile, but also some kind of a really old fish. And the way researchers discovered that this is a living fossil in terms of DNA and molecular biology is actually pretty funny. They basically had two separate fish from two completely different regions, separated by millions of years of evolution, kind of, I guess, fall in love and have babies or something. In other words, they had them reproduce, creating offspring. Okay, to be more exact, they didn't really force them to fall in love and to have babies, all of this was apparently natural. So these two separate species living in different environments occasionally crossbreed, producing fertile offspring. And what's interesting is that even though they produced a hybrid, here this was a fertile hybrid, kind of similar to that example of dogs and wolves. And that's despite the fact that there seems to be 105 million years of evolutionary distance between the two species involved. And so here by taking the long nose gar that's been present in North America for 100 million years, and combining it with alligator gar that very likely existed for 100 million years as well, they confirmed that the hybrids were also fertile and able to produce babies. But the last common ancestor for both of them very likely existed 105 million years ago. Basically implying that this particular fish has not really changed much in terms of genetics for at least 100 million years. Naturally making this potentially the oldest unchanged living fossil in the known record. And although something similar has been observed in sturgeons and also paddlefish, in both of these examples, the common ancestor is not as old. Now it's still millions of years old, but not 100 million years old. Officially making gar one of the strangest fish on the planet. And this, by the way, is a really strange fish already. It can grow over 7 feet or over 2 meters in length, and seems to have an ability to use its swim bladder as a kind of a lung. And they even have a tendency to go to the surface in order to occasionally take a gulp of air using their mouth. And more intriguingly, their overall morphology and their structure has not changed for 240 million years. Here's an example of one of these super ancient gar. Now it's obviously known if these were also very similar molecularly speaking in terms of DNA, but morphologically they're practically identical. Nevertheless, this very strange discovery presents us with a species with the slowest ever rate of molecular evolution. A species whose DNA has not changed in 100 million years, or hasn't changed much. And more importantly, the scientists behind the study believe that it's actually because of extremely efficient DNA repair. The DNA repair machinery in these species seems to be exceptionally effective, suggesting that not only do they not evolve anymore, because mutations inside of their DNA is practically impossible, they're also extremely unlikely to get major disorders, implying that there is something extremely important to learn from their DNA for various medical fields. And so a pretty cool discovery and a pretty cool confirmation that there seem to be living fossils out there after all. Right now it's just those three types of fish, but there might be more. Species whose DNA is practically unchanged for over a hundred million years. And so once we discover something else, or once there's a follow-up, I'll make sure to make another video and we'll discuss those new discoveries. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.